Joining me now is Adrian Gore, the CEO of Discovery. Adrian, thank you very much for joining us here on the Nielsen Network. If you could give me a quick highlight of the results as you see them released today. Well, I think firstly, uh, the context obviously was a, a difficult one of the, of the pandemic. So, you know, profound and really tragic. Uh, but the actual performance of the group has been quite exceptional. We, uh, we actually had a, we had probably the strongest performance we've had across the group, 19% increase in operating profits. But I think what's more exciting is the depth of it. If you go across all of our businesses, you know, they all performed well. Um, our new businesses, our bank, our emerging businesses, uh, Ping On Health, Discovery Insure, uh, all have really grown uh, strongly. So it's been, it's been a remarkably strong period. At the same time, our, our, our you know, focus on COVID and COVID provisions proved to be prudent. Um, so I, I think I, I'm really pleased. I think also just the emerging trends in, in coming out of COVID as we see them, you know, are so entirely suitable to our business model. You know, people moving online, people focusing on health and wellness. Um, it's, it's so it's been a very, very good period uh, for us in a difficult time. Adrian, if you can weigh in on a couple of themes out there, obviously, that have gripped everyone's attention. The first one is the vaccination strategy that we're embarking on as a country. What are your views on how it is being handled and the rollout per se? Well, I, th I think it's a complex issue and I think, you know, we'll see how well we do. But I mean, there's a lot of people involved, business, private sector, um, government, Department of Health, etc. So there's a lot going on. A lot of good, well-intentioned people are working very, very hard. I mean, I think I would say that the three pieces to it, funding, logistics and actual vaccine procurement. On the funding, I think I'm feeling comfortable with money. I, I don't think it's an issue. I think you saw the budget speech uh, yesterday, the amount allocated to give the private sector, what the private sector will pay. It seems funding is not a problem. The procurement of vaccines is complex, um, especially for the next couple of months. It would seem that government has made good progress in securing a, a quite a large pipeline. We're going to close that down and get that into the country quickly. Um, but I'm hoping that we can do that. And then 30 of the logistics is unknown yet. Um, there's a huge amount of work going on with private sector players as well. There's no reason why we shouldn't be able to get to levels that Israel got to per day or to the, you know, half the UK. If we do that, if we do that, we can vaccinate our high-risk groups by the middle of the year, before, by, by midwinter. That could be a very, very important goal, I think, from an epidemiological perspective. So uh, it's kind of the stuff is forming on the table. And my sense is with tight management and good collaboration, we could get a very good result out of it. But uh, massive risks uh, are in that process. When we look at the base case scenario, that everything unfolds as we would want it to unfold, when do you think and what will our new normal look like? Well, it's a great question. I, and I, I, there'd be hubris for me to try and stick my, you know, to give you any, I, I mean, a few things I'd say. First, I think there are risks of further variants and those kinds of things that are existential. We have to accept that. But I mean, I think an optimistic view would be that that we vaccinate people by year end and, you know, to an extent there is a reinfection risk, um, but we learn to live with it. And, you know, uh, we've just learned to moderate behaviour like and life goes back to normal, I would guess. Um, but I, I think in the shorter term, to me, the bigger issue is, is the issue of, of a potential third wave, uh, which I, I believe if we moderate our behaviour, keep our social distancing right, do what we're meant to do, uh, the wave may come and I think it will be entirely manageable. Um, so my view is just keep you know, super spreader events and that kind of stuff in the short term will really hamper our ability to get to a new normal, you know, not easy. Beyond the, the new normal per se, do you think that this hybrid way of working will uh, persevere in, in our broader environment? Again, I suppose, you know, this is uh, the lighter side of any business conversation is when everything returns to normal, will we retain some elements of the, the digital communication that we have so aggressively embarked on over this COVID-19 period? I mean, I hope the answer is yes. I mean, it's been the biggest mass experience uh, experiment ever known to man. You know what I'm trying to say to him? It, it would be madness to go back to everything the same, you know, when these digital tools have made some things dramatically better, you know. So I, I think, you know, the idea of flexible working spaces of flexible working times of working anywhere of not having to travel up and down overseas you know spending a week in a plane for a two-hour meeting those things are idiotic you, you know what i mean so to, to my to my mind if we can keep the really good stuff that we've created and get rid of the bad um i think it's a good thing I, I don't think we should we should hanker for everything going back to normal i mean life is about growth about change and 
you know, we've been through a war here. There's new technology. The world is different. You know, how could be better? Good place to leave it, Adrian Gore. Thank you very much for joining us.